doesn't get more of a British sailing scene than this, does it? Sailing the brand new Oyster 495 out through the needles. And this is a brilliant opportunity to test a really exciting new design. The first one built from the ground up since Richard Hadida took over the business four years ago. And also the smallest Oyster in the last two decades, essentially, since the, uh, since the 46 launched in 2005. Things have changed a lot and we're going to see that. Oyster have given us the opportunity to test a blue water yacht properly. We've got three days aboard and we're heading out across the channel to the Channel Islands. So this is Oyster 495 number one. 49 years Oyster have been building yachts and this is very much the modern Oyster. In fact, it's built in a brand new shipbuilding facility here in, in Southampton at Hythe and set up to be able to produce these yachts in a more modern fashion. Uh, and this is the first one. It launched earlier this summer and it's doing a world tour which essentially means it's done the Nordic regions and then here in the UK and then it's going off round to the Med and taking interested new owners and that sort of thing on it and um, it's designed really to appeal to a, a younger um, audience, couples and families as well who want to be able to get into the brand. Richard Hadida wanted to bring a sub 50 footer into the, into the family and it's already had a telling effect. 15 people have already signed up for a new 495, so great success rate already, and it's appealing to this new ownership, these new buyers, because only two of those have owned an Oyster before, so they're bringing new people into the, into the family. Younger couples and families, and you can see, I mean, just the color scheme alone, this is a, it's a new, fresh Oyster. It's exciting. So we have got the opportunity to sail it in some stunning conditions. We've got mainly sort of easterlies here, so we're heading across the channel to the Channel Islands where there should be some more breeze over the next couple of days as well. And it's a great chance to try something out which is really deemed at blue water sailing, the type of sailing their owners are doing like the World Rally at the moment. And uh, yeah, to be able to test a blue water cruiser, you've got to spend a bit of time aboard it thankfully in a bit of sun. When the wind played ball, we enjoyed some reaches with the kite and were able to get across the channel efficiently that afternoon. In time for a sunset off the rugged west coast of Alderney. Pressing on, we found a temporary berth in Guernsey late that night, in readiness for more breeze to come. So this is what it's all about. We did, did a fair bit of single wind, wind, single figure wind sailing before, and now when we've got wind in the teens, we've now got 15 to 18 knots, and the boat comes alive. We're off just off Sark, we're heading to an anchorage in Sark, but we're gonna sail around here for the day, and yeah, it's a boat built for trade wind sailing, so what's the point in sailing in single figures upwind? This is what it's designed to do.
we're now fetching in, sitting at around nine and a half knots, 15 knots true, and whether it's, whether it's fetching, beam reaching, broad reaching, boat's happy place is around nine, and now nine and a half knots. It's, uh, yeah, it's a mile muncher. And the nice thing about being on the helm here, it's, you've got that freeboard, so you feel dry and protected because it's a deep cockpit. So even though you're nice and high up here on the helm, you've got great visibility over the low coach roof, but good footwells in here, feels stable. I'm standing at the moment, obviously won't be doing that across an ocean, but I like to sit out on the, on the combings here. Really nice position. I've still sat down here, got full vis over the coach roof, looking at the telltales, no problem at all. Also standing, you won't be able to see it from here, but um, yeah, you've got a good angled footwell each side. So feels stable. You'll notice the decks are all still dry as well, apart from right up on the foredeck. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's, it's comfortable seating as well, both to windward and to leeward. And the other thing I wanted to point out whilst we're on the breeze is how easy it is to trim the boat. So I'll show you from the leeward side as well, but that primary winch is perfectly to hand. Really nice step each side to come in and out of the cockpit, but also to trim this winch. Winch is all powered on this one let off or trim it from here uh, and we'll have a look on the other pedestal now at how easy it is to trim the sails as well this one set up um, with Selden's new hydraulic furling system yeah so this is your lure position you know you can step out here you can step out here have a great view up the lure deck there check what's under the Genoa um, or back secure in here at the pedestal works really nicely and yeah this is what I'm talking about having the push button controls especially for this if I want to let the main sheet out here now you won't know it's absolutely silent but that's going out and it's a really nice it's a magic trim style hydraulic system in the boom which Oyster are working with Seldon on at the moment but yeah there we go just deep powered the boat nice and silently and easily no one else having to do anything standard setup would be what Oyster's done for ages and that's to have the main sheet on a two to one that goes around the blocks just onto this uh, winch here which they've kept you know for this boat number one to, to, to use both systems if they want to try them out but that's a powered winch as well so very easy for the helmsman to be able to control the boat trim the boat without having to call crew members up here all from these pedestal areas works really nicely indeed Looking forward to a bit more of this today. And that was a perfect example of the benefits you can get from push button sailing. And, you know, we just came in, you can see it's still pretty windy here. Sailed straight into the anchorage. No one else had to do anything. I just let the jib sheet out, jib furl in with this right index finger, main sheet in with my left index finger, just as we came into the anchorage, with enough way still on to then move all the way over to here and go windless down on this button here. Anchor was set, sails on, didn't even have to engage the engine. It was a real perfect example of easy sailing for one person to manage a yacht this size. When everything works that well, it's uh, really very impressive. So we've pulled up to this anchorage on the west coast of Sark. It's stunning, as you can see, but a pretty good time as well. Well, we've got the sails down to have a look over the deck. And the first thing you'll notice up here on the foredeck, really, particularly for an oyster, is just how clean it is and it shares some of that design philosophy of the 565 and 595 and, and takes it further. So yeah, super clean wide foredeck. Still have uh, fittings here for your derades and cages. So together with the mushroom vents you can see there in the, in the um, skyscape hatches for the forward cabin. 
you're getting a yeah, good amount of ventilation through into the interior, which together with those Oyster Trademark coach roof forward wind facing windows that open make a heck of a difference. I mean, weather like this, you would normally be getting pretty hot down below. Open those up and you're getting a real proper amount of ventilation uh, and hence no real reliance on aircon needed when there is a breeze. You can see there's still some pretty good gusts coming over here at the moment. In terms of the foredeck area, yeah, we've still got plenty of volume up here uh, and we'll see that below decks, what, what that creates in terms of accommodation. But a really uh, key piece of the design of a blue water cruiser is to have good stowage space and that includes in this day and age somewhere to put your kite so we'll open up the sail locker now and have a look at that forward of the sail locker we have an anchor locker below the windlass powered windlass there with the buttons here and then a double anchor roller forward forward of the stem there with a tack point further forward so all belt and braces stuff so you can see now with the sail locker open just how much space you get in here that's the a sail we've been sailing with and uh, yeah probably swallowing about half of it if i climb in you see plenty of space for sheets and spare warps and then half open bulkhead into the chain locker 60 meters of chain as standard and then aft is the watertight bulkhead uh, and the inner stay sail if you were to have one attachment point there one thing i would add is that i you know that it's excellent to have a sail locker but i think that's quite a squeeze getting that a sail in so yeah that's there to protect the electronics below it but it'd be nice to have a little bit more of an opening area there to get the uh, the big sails in moving aft really nice scuppers built built in between the teak decks there and the tow rails work really well and you might be able to see on this uh, not the lighting but the lighting obviously throughout the boats amazing um, something that the boss Richard Hadid is very keen on that there is a, a vinyl wrap join and that's about the only way of telling it is a wrap really you can just see the bit of unless there's actually any damage to it um, but I think it's a clever idea because you know you can have uh, you can keep the a very, a very bright minty color scheme like this and uh, keep it in good nick for quite a long time then you peel the wrap off and uh, the gel coat below is still in very good condition it's also a fair, lot, fair bit, about a third cheaper than painting it, I believe. Anyway, Carpe Diem, the first 495, has a carbon mast, an aluminium boom, and a very nice set of carbon spectra dolphin sails. This one you can see has the Genoa pole on there, so you can pole out your Genoa sailing downwind, um, and winch on the mast base and a powered winch on the deck on this side for running your halyards and as I've mentioned during the sailing this one also testing out a new seldom main sheet system in the boom itself so there's hydraulic cylinders in the boom which are tensioning that main sheet which means that, yeah it can just run one sheet neatly through that through there and you've got push buttons so as well as that as you've got those hydraulics They've also used the hydraulics for the backstay tension, the vang tension, and uh, the furlers as well. So the in-mast furling and the jib sheet furling. Sorry, the general furler. And for us, it's worked really, really well. But I can understand why some people would want to stick to, you know, powered winch setup. Walking back through the wide side decks, again, super clean here and worth pointing out just you know what a nice run this Genoa sheet is here kept inboard here so there's no fouling of the deck when you're walking up there you've got your shroud bases outboard you've got a good grab rail nice and high on the coach roof 
and then your brain, something you details you'll pick up is, is the attention to detail on the lines so that the curves and angles all flow neatly so there's the teardrop windows and then that angle will flow up nicely onto there and you see it continue all the way onto the pedestals another feature i really like is having this step in the combing um, means you can step over into the cockpit easily um, and the, the primary winches are mounted off the side deck in reach of the helm not cluttering anything and uh, yeah works really really well the clutch which is on either side is for uh, the tack line which will run through these little fair leads here through the clutch but you can also run the preventer so on the boom on each side is a preventer line running there so running forwards and then you can run your preventer line back to this clutch so on one side you could have the tack for your spinnaker for your asymmetric and the, on the other for your preventer to keep the boom from slamming across belt and braces stuff and then back here for extra spinnaker winches really comfortable push bit seats and you can just see here really how much beam you've got here massive amount of aft deck space again the lines how the combings are brought right aft here give protection all around that cockpit area and indeed to this aft deck and the hatches for the aft cabin below me here is a gas locker if you're having gas cooking so you've got two six kilo gas bottles in there And you can see the main sheet blocks there if you're having the standard system to that powered winch. Now this, in this guys here, we have the swim platform out. So that literally just comes horizontally into the lazarette at the push of a button. So you can take the guardrails off, down the steps and integrated in these steps got a shower i believe yeah there's a shower in there and a ducting in that side and then a sturdy boarding ladder and cleats on this aft deck and i'll open up the las now so another big big benefit of bringing your beam right aft like this is the amount of stowage space you create in that aft locker and that will be a massive benefit to uh, long distance sailors. Lazarette open now. So if we jump down into this lazarette, you'll see how it goes right the way across the beam of the boat. And there's a hefty amount of stuff in here already for a new boat. Rather than just board the whole lot out, they, they just did above what I'm sitting on here is that the casing for that swim platform that, that extends out. Um, but they've left it open on each side here so that you have all of this extra stowage space in there. And um, yeah, I mean, it'd be really useful because, you, you, you know, there's the inflatable dinghy for this one, for example. Um, but you might want, if you haven't got davits, you might want to keep your dinghy in here, paddle boards, fenders, you name it watertight bulkhead keeping the um, this aft section and indeed the steering gear and rudder so there's the rudder stop there and here and so you're keeping those separate from the interior if you did ever have a problem the water's not going to go through to your interior as well um, there is there are limber holes so if you do get water in here it will go through to the main bilge pump and in the cockpit itself, uh, yeah, it, again, um, really an evolution and a continuation of what they've done with the 565 and 595. What stands out to me is the attention to detail, both the size of the cockpit and um, all these little features that they've done around it, the lines in particular, um, but also how sturdy it is. There's grab handles everywhere and how easy it is to walk through it have plenty of people in here but keeping your sailing system separate to that big big cockpit uh, keeping it comfortable really so it just means you can come out 
on deck. You can walk over there easily enough, but just back here, aft deck area, uh, and straight along the side decks, with nothing impinging that. We talked about these helm areas while sailing, with deep wells, foot wells. People often talk about with centre cockpits and oysters, it's being exposed up here when you're helming. But remember, there is some depth there, and also there's an attachment. We've got the spray hood up here, you've got your attachment point for your bimini, which would cover all of this area if you wanted it to forward to the spray hood. So you can keep out of the sun easily enough whilst on the helm as well. Or, of course, you stick it on autopilot and you're up under the spray hood. But the cockpit itself is nice and deep. You can see the step here. If I go forward here, and you'll see when we go below the bridge deck space, that creates in the aft cabin. It's, yeah, it's amazing, the headroom below. These pedestals lift up. So there's a grub screw there. You can see the hinges for it, so you can access the wiring underneath and indeed the chain sprocket for the steering for the steering gear, gear which so it goes chain to rod back to the um, the quadrants and then that just leaves a big clear cockpit area that you can easily see eight around this table big fixed table the aft section of which is engine venting so the vents the engine come up from underneath there space there for a chart plotter to be mounted that could be shorter or indeed repositioned because it's yeah do, people will knock a long throttle lever like that but lovely how the cockpit bench surrounds really do enclose you in here and then yeah forward end of the table you've got a nice fridge plenty of space up either side of the companion way as well. Oh, I was going to do the, the big yawn and to show you what it's like to wake up in this master cabin, but yeah, I thought that might be a little bit too smug. So yeah, what can I say? This is really what you get from Oyster. It's just a sensational aft master cabin, even on a 50 footer. I say even, this is a big 50 footer, but I, I, there can't be many people who would be unhappy with a cabin of this size and luxury. And the view is the best you get on the inside of the boat. Nice little sofa berth. And then, yeah, you can see they've got this walkway each side around big island berth. What you might not be able to see is just how much headroom there is here, which is six foot four, I think 100, 194 centimeters. And that was that step in there. There's the cockpit step right there. It helps create that room. And yeah, in terms of wow factor, you come into this cabin and yeah, hard to top really, so yeah same walkway here on this side so just stowage on the starboard side stereo controls this the lighting on here is fantastic it's like the 595 um, really easy to control different sorts of mood lights plenty of plug sockets on this boat and then the whole window is taken right out here and yeah do you want for some reason not to look at the view or to have it sleep in there's blinds on everything, escape hatches and ventilation out onto the cockpit and there's your aft watertight bulkhead. And when you are at sea, um, you notice there are hooks here for the lee cloths to uh, branch off either side of the, or the centre part of the bed as well. Good sized drawers underneath this berth. And Close this door. There's your main stowage in double lit and ventilated hanging wardrobe with more below as well. 
So stowage is pretty good in this cabin in general. It took me two days to notice that there was a, a TV on that bulkhead. I'm not personally don't watch much telly in bed, but for those that do, it'll be quite nice. And yeah, more stowage each side of that berth with reading lights there. And here's the ensuite, which is a good size. Again, remembering this is a 50 footer. The thing that they've done really well is to create the shower and the room for proper standing headroom shower. So you step down here, it's sort of built into the engine room and galley section below, basically below the cockpit. Then you get in here, good turnaround space, and there's your shower head up there with ventilation out into the cockpit as well. Very, very clever. Um, otherwise, yeah, nicely lit, good natural light. And uh, yeah, they use a man-made uh, product on these. Uh, it's like Corian um, on the, the basins around the sinks and in the heads and in the galley as well. Again, good stowage in here electric heads could do with maybe heated towel rails I haven't looked at whether that's an option or not but um, yeah it would be good because you don't have a wet hanging locker on this boat so you'd be hanging in this or the forward shower anything wet so yeah getting some ability to dry towels out and other wet products would be useful Moving forward from here, you've got um, basically this companionway area, uh, which is split between your engine room inboard and stowage outboard. In this case, washer dryer up here, stowage, and an optional freezer. This second part storage section can be even more fridge freezer space so you could have a double chest style freezer in there which I would have thought Liverpool cruisers would value very highly so moving forward here you might think optical illusion you're gonna hit your head on that but you don't because you have two steps that drop down into this forward section of the boat past the mast base keel step mast and then really a tried and tested format for a yacht this size and for Oyster. Compact Pullman bunk cabin in here. And yeah, there's five of us on board, so full of kit. But you've got a narrow, tall wardrobe. Again, a nice lighting details throughout here. Lee cloths and opposite the shared heads and shower area. So opposite you have the shared heads and good size shower area there. Ventilation and light above in a stowage below and behind the mirrored locker there. Again, this is gonna be your wet hanging in here though as well. Good size heads, electric, but really nice attention to detail and finish quality wherever you look. Forward cabin. Really good size again that's the modern hull shape volumes to be able to get your headboard up that end behind the sail locker. Plenty of beam up there and look at the natural light. Always to call those skyscape escape hatches to go with their seascape vertical uh, hull ports. And there's the mushroom vents in them giving the ventilation below and obviously you can open those up both each way depending on your wind direction so those together with the hull ports very and the yeah this light oak finish and the white veneers and upholstery yeah very very nice and light so to starboard here is just space really that's where your um pullman cabin starts so a bit of changing space with the steps up to hull each side. You've got two deep, 
deep drawers running right under the under the berth itself and a good size lit ventilated hanging wardrobe there but yeah again not too bad a place to wake up really important thing about a blue water yacht is being able to access and maintain things something always to do really well is giving access to below the floorboards where you need it so the space is used really well um the floorboards all on suckers so you know you, you get a suction system you pull them off and what i've done is lift up these floorboards to sh to show you starting forward and moving aft this section here just has these really compact new selden hydraulic motors power in the main sheet and the van the backstay etc and the, and the furlers and yeah super neat and small these are uh, the tank for which is below here in the kind of suit you can see there it's probably only five liters um, and really quiet as well the nice thing is you can you know furl sails without disturbing people asleep then this is the main this is the step here up onto the uh, main saloon sole level so below this step you have the main visual access into the deepest part of the bilge so you can see there that the, the sump at the bottom you've got the strong boxes for the main um bilge pumps and uh yeah that's the best way of uh, the, the, the benefit of having the stump keel like that really is, is your any water you're collecting is going to collect in one deep area at the top of the keel um, you can see the water here, there's the water level, but the main visual for that is on the port side here and you get these good clear inspection hatches, same on the fuel tank on the starboard side. And as well as keeping uh, weight central and low, you know, it's using this semi ray saloon floor really, really well. So, again, yeah, inspection for hatches into that 800 litres worth of fuel and a dipstick here as well, 600 litres of water. And then in the central section here, something they've done really well here on the 495 is to make use of the top of that sump for the grey water tank. So, these black pipes leading into this tank here are coming from the sinks in the heads and the shower and they are gravity fed down here into that uh, grey water tank which will automatically discharge when it's full or you can manually override it you know if, if marinas etc don't want it in there obviously here you've also got electrics so in here is a sealed battery box this has the standard master volt gel batteries in it um, and they're mounted on this side here are the breaker boxes as well um, there are the trip switches over at the NAS station and there's your master volt combi inverter and battery charger yes that's got you know some waterproof protection on and the leads going into them mounted downwards in case you get any condensation in there these steps do lift the bottom ones for access into the engine room but we will show you the engine room in a bit because it already has pretty superb access so then moving aft uh, is the water maker below the sole boards here so this here is the main engine room access but yeah the only main other plumbing area not in the uh, the engine room you know is having this water maker here but look how easy it is to to service and maintain the control is just here the control panel for it below the nav station seat and yeah it's a desolator ac and dc so you've got a motor driving it on dc and then you know when you're under power at sea and then an ac one as well and that's you know feeding the salt water through through the platinum membranes there and using reverse osmosis to get 100 up to 100 liters per hour of fresh water and we'll open up these doors now so full height doors here and half height into the engine room and generator 
worth noting. Really well fitted floorboards, there's no creaking or banging around. They've got these nipples on the edges of them, little rubber gaskets on them and Velcro down as well, which is why you want those big old ply sole boards, that's why you need the, the suckers to get them up. That's pretty solid. So it's 110 horsepower Yamaha sail drive and a sail drive element means that you know the gearbox there is going straight down you don't need a long prop shaft which gives you all that space aft as well uh, off the off the engine you've got twin alternators so the domestic alternator 110 amp hour serving your four 200 amp hour gel batteries loads of power um, and yeah look at how well labeled and installed it is one big sea chest here where you've got your aircon and water maker raw waters coming out of and uh yeah oil filters fuel filters for your main engine your record fuel filter there for your gen set as well and uh yeah the interlock the water cooler there for separating the the, the um, and the strainers as well, all mounted to the things that you need to get at and change, the engine strainers and gen set strainers, the filters are all labelled and raised and well lit and easy to access. And then moving aft, you've got the 8 kilowatt Fisher Panda gen set to give you the extra AC power when needed. Very, very well done for a yacht this size to have this much space. Been a pretty memorable stay here, short stay here on the west coast of Sark. And now we will head the 80 or so miles back across the channel. So we say goodbye to our little play area on the west coast of Sark. And we are going to go back across the channel. So now we're leaving here, heading north to get with this is the, the race of Old Knee, super strong tide. So we're going to go um, to the west of Old Knee in the Cascades. And then it will be going back across the channel on a sort of north northeast direction for 70 miles. The wind is, of course, northeast, um, so we will take what breeze we can, whether that em end up sailing sort of on a northerly route towards um, the pool, Weymouth area, and then along there, uh, or, yeah, motor sail into it, we will find out, but it's a lovely evening for it. So you can see here, good amount of space in this walkway from the companionway up to the aft cabin and a good desk come chart table nav station area you know really good social interaction with those in the saloon and through under the companionway to the galley there um, plenty of space i do it feels a little bit low um, you can see the step there um, and when you're sitting on the seat and you don't really have direct views over the sails this panel here I'll show you this is actually for a computer I could open it here so that's where you have your PC screen when you're doing your work um, I wonder whether that would have made a nice hole window there for a navigator to see out through a porthole Anyway, as it is, big area, good size chart table, um, lift top to it with good stowage underneath, lighting, aircon, stereo, plenty of plugs, as you can see, in use. And then here you have your instruments, plotter, C-zone, digital switching control, VHF, charger inverter, and generator control. And then further aft, we have um, you know, the touchscreen system, which we saw in the 595, which they're putting on all their yachts now, where you can interrogate all of the systems on the boat um, and switch on the lighting, look at the bilge, 
levels, your tank levels. Really clear intuitive touchscreen for that. And then below it, your normal switchboard for your 24 volts here and your 230 volts below. I should also mention normal, really good access to the wiring behind the instruments as well. Easy to get at and all numbered and labeled. And for those interested in the noise levels at the moment, I think pretty good. I've measured them, but you know, we're doing nine knots here. So that revs on, I think, 2,300, oh, here we go, engine revs, 2,350. Burning 10 and a half liters per hour. So come down these six yeah. companionway steps and yeah, really naturally light, inviting Ray Saloon format. It's a real winner. And you can see one of the best things about this 495 I think is this galley layout they've gone for proper u-shaped galley we'll have a look through it in a minute but brace yourself on either tack and you know conventionally that might well be passageway through to you know a longitudinal galley through to the aft cabin they've enclosed it here made that passageway on the starboard side with behind the nav station which in turn and it's the beam you know the modern beam going off that allows you to do that really uh, what you're left with in the galley is yeah step down here and good surround worktops and it, it just opens out the boat it makes it all very naturally light inviting you can see how they've extended those coach roof windows all the way aft there to bring this help bring this light in here which is continued obviously all the way around the saloon itself you still get the opening big opening windows which we saw from the deck for the ventilation through here we will have a look under all the floorboards but basically they are taken up with tanks mechanics and engineering and so you're left with quite a you know simple saloon very tastefully furnished and you have the option for this style of table it would just normally be a fixed table but this one will drop down to fill in this area here to make a day bed or a double bed basically they are looking at putting in a lee cloth option there so you could have that as a pilot berth good thing about having this option a table though is having that additional handrail there and then you can probably see how thick these cushions are on the saloon berth from this side there's on the port side behind there a flat screen TV which raises up otherwise there is stacks of headroom here I can only just touch, touch the headlining um, to my mind, perhaps, I don't know, where you don't quite get, I'd like to be able to, I'd have to see the sea more easily. I have to stand on tiptoes to be able to get that view. And sitting down, it's not quite at eye level, but you cannot fault the amount of natural light in here. Sun's just set just finished finished our lasagna come down to make a brew good chance to look at the galley here we've got the red light on now for the evenings really easy as i said there to switch between the lighting and it's a good chance now we're at heel we're sailing under full main in genoa um, to see how easy and well set up this is for bracing yourself on either tack so you have that step down from the saloon area and straight into really well fiddled work surface area so this is high max it's like corian um, man-made and molded in the yard really like this inboard sink area because um, you know this is where you're obviously washing up and doing some work 
and you're in social interaction, but you also have that natural light pouring down through the companionway. Good size double sink with just what you want next to it, a good sweep in bin, which is a good size as well. There is another bin under here, which is used as a recycling bin on this one. Um, and also these deep fiddles, as well as acting as handrails, you know, catch any water uh, or any mess that you make. This one has, I would say it's a relatively compact galley for this size yacht and this volume of yacht and the stowage reflects that as well. In, it's good, it's absolutely adequate. But in this, this guise, um, you know, this has a dishwasher, for example, and I think I'd maybe opt for using all of this space here at the moment that just has a little bit of drop down, you know, bread bin stowage there essentially. But all of that could either be one drop down locker or um, extra refrigeration space. But there is the extra fridge space uh, on, the, on the starboard side in that passageway. As it is, you have this half height forward facing fridge which is great combined with the freezer we have on here as well. And I mean, as at the moment, this isn't being used as a dishwasher, it's champagne stowage, obviously. Uh, and you lock that um, there. When at heel, pan stowage below. There is in the bilges here, there is a little bit of um, tin stowage, but otherwise, the rest of it is in, in the lockers you see. So um, small sink lockers below there. And then coffee, coffees and teas and crockery up in the raised lockers. This one has yeah, a big microwave oven there as well. And then outboard stowage in these lockers and a spice rack, an oil rack there with a pull-out um, ventilation fan above it. Uh, yes, gimbaled four burner GN East Bass Ocean Chef 4 oven. Works really well. And then um, a bit more stowage below here, a bit more pan stowage below the oven, and then these long, deep drawers on either side. Cutlery draw on the angle and a bit more stowage below that as well. And then your glass is in there. So I'm going to put the kettle on. Easy to do. Plug in kettle or Nespresso maker on the inverter or of course old school stick it on the stove. Good morning, on the graveyard shift. It's um, four o'clock in the morning, as you can see, first light here. And uh, yeah, I guess Carpe Diem, the name of the first boat applicable, sees the day. And we've been seizing these long days indeed. Unfortunately, not enough wind to sail all the way back, but, with the help of the engine and now a couple of knots of tide uh, we're getting swiftly across the channel at over nine knots with the mainland now in sight and the Isle of Wight. Beautiful morning. Sitting here on watch on the way back is thinking about this 495, it's three words really come to mind and it's modern in design and build and looks, comfort throughout and luxury. Um, you know, it's a premium quality build at a premium price tag, but it's the, yeah, it's the comfort it offers you. This is a big 50 footer uh, on deck below and in the cabins so you know with that comes the comfort of being able to passage plan at you know over eight nice well an average of nine really be sailing at nine knots or at motor with a big engine 800 liters of fuel yeah, we 
done some lovely sailing and good breeze but then when the breeze does die you know you can still get places and um, yeah I think that's the a comfort a blue yacht a blue water yacht like this will bring and uh, yeah together with the luxuries on board as well but yeah this uh, can certainly see this applying to um, you know it's a bit of a younger audience for, for oyster uh, obviously with a bit of wealth to them but uh, can certainly see a lot of couples and families having some pretty fun adventures on these boats signing out Thank you.